would have to be 100 years ago. Yeah, Dad was only a lad when he started with Grandfather and them, and they were, they were fishing long before. Yeah. Like, they were old enough. Yeah, yeah. Had a row everywhere, and if there was any wind, they'd sail. Yeah, they used to row to the lake. Gee, that'd have to be close to 15 miles, wouldn't it be 15 miles? And no fish, and then you row home. They talk about the good old days. They also caught the tide to the broad water above McLean. And the same methods, sails and paddles. Yeah. They, they, were, they used to do catch snapper yeah. and lobsters. But these fellows I was telling you about, these Searles and Noly's generation, like his grandfather's generation, they used to, uh, from where uh, Ben's are there today, they used to row up above the old ferry, that saltwater inlet, and then they had a horse in a pen there, and the horse was that cranky when they get their daylight with the mosquitoes and sandflies been eating him all night. They had to catch the horse, put him in a cart, load all the gear on, then go out to Woody Head, then push their boats off the beach and either row or sail all the way to Blackrock. Yeah. And that's 12 miles from, yeah. you know. And then they used to have to come back, as John said, put everything into their horse, into their cart, and they'd unload it into their boats and bring it all the way down here to Wailuka. Now, there was no cooperative in those days set up because all of their uh, catches was transported by the North Coast steamers down to Sydney. And there was a big wharf out in front about where Ben's marina is now. And they used to walk up a walkway, a landing type thing, and, and pack their stuff up on top of that wharf to, ready for the steamer. In big boxes. Boxes would be as big as this table, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. they? The sawdust and ice in them. And uh, when the fishermen had quite a large catch of fish to pack, the women folk used to go and cut ferns. And they'd put fish in these large uh, crates, large boxes, uh, and then they'd put the ferns and put ice on the top of the ferns so as if the ice wouldn't melt too quickly by the time it got to go all the way down. Lots of times uh, the North Coast steamer would get bar bound and they couldn't get out over the bar with their big catches of fish, all their catches of fish. And yeah, they used to have to dispose of them in the main river. Tip them over the side of the boat. Yeah. Sharks were out there. Oh, gosh, there were some sharks <laughs> around that wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. They had a, a type of a special clothing that they wore. They used to wear, wear flannels. Uh, their top shirt was a flannel, a grey flannel. And their pants was, I think it was made out of a flannelly stuff. They wore a piece of string around here, dug it up. They used to call them bow yanks. Mm. And they were all barefooted. They had the hardest feet. <laughs> yeah, walk along oysters with no boots on. Oh, yeah. Their, their wives used to make all their oil skins. <laughs> yeah. They'd buy uh, calico. And the wives, women used to make the oil skins. They never looked there, they didn't. No. Make. No. The boats in the river were only small. They only had about four or five horsepower engines in them. And then eventually they got to about 10 or 12 horsepower, they were about oh, 18, 20 foot boats, but the boats that went to sea were, what were they, about 25, 30 oh, footers? Yeah, it was a big boat in those days, only had about 15 horsepower, that Nautilus that uh, Mr. Patton owned. But the bar was bad. When we first, Nolly and I first went to sea, yeah. those old fellas used to give you a lecture every morning, don't yeah. you? You blokes go near that bar in the dark. Yeah. You get drowned. It was a no no. Not like it is today since they built these new walls. When we started, as long as you had a, a dollar, like, what was it, 10 bob? 10 shillings for a for license. A license. You could do what you like. Now there's that many regulations. No, he's got to get a license to blink his eyes. Yeah. He'll, got, he'll have to get a license to change his mind, the way they're going. We are uh, environmentalists and conservationists. Fishermen do look after their own industry. Look, there's, there's no saying that they don't. You take over the years, they've had riddlers for their prawns. They've used nets that uh, try and let the little ones through so that they don't have to catch the little prawns and sort them. And <laughs> the fishermen don't want them. They don't want those undersized fish because they're next year's or That's next strong. week's, next month's. They're the fish they're going to be catching. In John and I's time, we have saw the development of the fishing industry. Like we've seen our grandfathers with their gear like to go along in front of McLean and the net poles that was right along oh, that yeah, river yeah, bank yeah. and you went came in I look and you could we can still visualise all of their net sheds and their net poles and the, the fishermen mending their nets at the poles and that 
all the way right down and into the bay, up as far as the old ferry. And it has changed, but it has changed for uh, technology, modern technology. Like in those days we had wooden boats, damn goddamn things you had to paint them, you left them up on the, on the bank too long, they they, the wood in them shrank and they'd leak. But we're now we're into aluminium boats and that, and there's no upkeep on our aluminium boats. Actually, it hasn't changed a heck of a lot. Like you go and uh, mash mullet, you certainly see a suit around the weed and around your patch of mullet where you can see them. Uh, Sean and I still use ladders to climb up the ladders mm. to see our brim travelling along, and we still shoot them. It's exactly the same method that our forefathers done it and hauled the fish ashore. Uh, yeah, it's just a method that they done, and we, we've carrying it on. And our, here's our grandchildren doing it now. You know, it's it's been handed down down the line. When Noel and us started fishing, you had an old lamp, lamp? and the glass was that black that you couldn't <laughs> even see where the lamp was going or not. You know, you might as well have booted it over the side because there wasn't any light coming out of it. But uh, that's what they had. Yeah. That's all they had. That's all you had. The fish roll up on the lead line with the net. Um, and in the dark, you've got to hold it up to the moon or the stars to see. You're not sure if it's a bull rat or a needle tail or a flat out of what it is, you know? And you're in the dark. South of Yamba, there where it's close today, we used to work down there, he used to line the lights up. There was a big cluster of lights there. That was as far south as you could go without yeah. getting snagged up. These places, computers break down today yeah. and you tell them, get down there, you know? You line them lights up, they look at you like you're stupid. Yeah, What's up with this old bloke? What's he talking about? Lights? <laughs> they don't even look at them. That's all they look at, that's computer. Yeah, it's all on there. When Nolly and I first started no. fishing, you get a fresh in the winter time, unheard of, that you had to throw fish over the side. Once they put those big drains in, I took a bloke to sea with me, a marine biologist, and he told me then when I first started, he said, look out, you don't wind up with our acid sulfate soil. I didn't even know what he was talking about. He said, if you disturb that, look out. And that's exactly what happened. Today, we're going the other way, trying to reverse it. Mm. Our industry is a fluctuating industry. We, we've got the elements that's, that's against us at times, especially on work in that ocean and that. We get the elements against us. They have, or well, we did when we were out there too. And you can't always say that the weather's going to be good on the right part of the moon or when you want to be there because you can't. And yeah, but still, that was fishing, and fishing sort of got, uh, yeah, it was your way of life. That's it. It was your way of life. And it was a good way and of life. And it was a good way of life.